Hi everybody, this is Fred Call, the Great Fredini, coming to you from the Coney Island Scanorama. I am going to be doing a little walkthrough of my workflow for cleaning up a 3D mesh that's been scanned with Reconstruct Me software. This is based on some videos that Tony Buser from MakerBot did a while back, and I've just kind of honed my workflow for how to clean up a scan done with my Scanatron 3000 rig. And so let me walk you through my, my process. So I've just loaded this mesh that was scanned with Reconstruct Me. The first thing I did was I've just righted the file and I wanna, I wanna turn this guy so he's facing us. Um, one of the things, uh, the Z axis is is different in Reconstruct Me than it is in 3D printing software. So I just want to write this guy right side up and get it more or less level. But the problem with the mesh right now is it's not a watertight solid. So we want to close up all these holes in him and get rid of some of these floating bits. So NetFab, I'm using NetFab Basic. It's free software off of the NetFab website. And you notice the exclamation point down in the corner here. That's flagging that this is a not a printable file. It's, uh, there's problems with the mesh. So we're going to go to the red cross up top here, which is their repair uh, screen. So we can see all the little floating bits. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. Uh, here, let me deselect. All right, right click and select this shell. So the part I want to keep has all highlighted green and the other parts are not. So from there I'm going to inverse my selection. There's a menu item up top here, the green and blue triangles toggle selection and this is also available in the edit menu toggle selection. So now all the parts I don't want are highlighted green. I'll go to this little triangle with the red X and remove selected triangles. Bam! So now we have only the mesh that we want and it looks pretty clean. This is a nice clean scan. We can see we've got a couple little holes. Now there's some other tools in NetFab that we don't need to get into but uh, some of the things you might uh, come in contact with are, um, you know, if you have too many holes or, oh, here's a good example. So there's some little floating bits up inside of him. So let me right click here and I'm going to select this surface. All right, so that selects the whole surface. That's no good. I'm going to click select and select a bunch of triangles within this little floating bit here. And my goal is to just sort of select as much as possible of that little floating bit. Here, let's do it with this other, hard to see up in here, but uh, again, we're gonna just select some of these little floating bits. I just wanna make, I'm holding the shift key as I'm dragging around on here so that I'm selecting a lot of these uh, little points and I can click on this green triangle up above and it zooms in on that part. So, uh, here, let's grab a couple more of these guys. And I just wanna try and select as much of this stuff as possible. All right. Now, obviously, I'm not getting, oh, I lost my place, not getting everything that I need. So what I want to do now is put the mouse over one of these green spots. I'm going to right click and expand selection. I'll do that a couple times. Whoa. Oh, crap. Don't lose my selection. All right. There we go, a couple more times. Try and select as much of this stuff as possible. All right, now, if we zoom out, 
I'm sure we're starting to get some stuff on the other side of the coat, but I'm okay with that. We're gonna we're gonna be okay. So I'm gonna delete those points, and you'll see now we've got a little hole. Now for reference, there are some other tools in NetFab, so you can also, if you're worried about it, you can actually use this tool to add triangles. So for example, I could draw a little bridge and sort of give it a little guide for where I'm gonna to wanna to build surfaces. Um, I'm not so worried about the ability for it to repair this. I think it's gonna be okay, but um, if you ever need to kind of build bridges for where you want to have a repair happen, you can use this tool to add some triangles in, okay? But basically now we've cleaned out the parts we don't want. I'm going to do one more time. Uh, I'm going to select this shell, toggle to select inverse, so any little floating bits inside of them. I can delete one last time. And now let's run the automatic repair script. I'm just going to click this automatic repair button down bottom. Default repair, execute. We'll see the project, the process bar down at the bottom. And what it's going to do is going to close up all these holes. And this is a pretty clean scan, so it won't take too long, but it takes a little while. And you'll see this surface at the bottom close up. All right, someday this week. Um, there we go. So we have a nice, clean little... Uh, Closed up thing. This is almost ready for printing, but it's not quite. So I'm going to click Apply Repair. It's, it'll prompt me to remove the old part. I say yes, and we're back in here. So there's two problems that prevent this from being printable still. The first thing is, is that it's life size. This is right now 1,851 millimeters tall. It's a little big for my printer. The second thing is it's not actually flat on the bottom, so we need to do a planar cut to make that actually 3D printable, so it'll adhere to the build platform. So first thing I do, I can drag this, the, I've cut uh, sliders for X, Y, and Z axis, so I can slide these, and if I need to, let's look from all different angles. So it looks like we could just tip him a tiny bit forward. That looks pretty good. Let's look on the other side. That looks pretty good. Back. Let's see how it looks on the bottom. Now I've, I've, I have this checkbox here, show points on cut, and that really helps you see where you're cutting. I'm gonna also check over here, triangulate cut, so it'll build a surface on the cut. And let's execute, and we see we now have two pieces. So I'll, I'll select this bottom piece, right click, remove it. And it doesn't always work to build the surface on the cut. You'll see that it failed and we now have an open bottom again. Um, so in this case, we'll just do again the automatic repair to close that up again. And that shouldn't take so long this time, but you never know. Hmm. Watching the progress bar. Oop. Yeah. 
Okay, so we have a nice clean bottom now. Let's apply that repair. And the last thing we have to do is to resize the model and move it to the origin point. So I scale, I'm going to call these prints at 113 scale. The multiplier is 0 0.077. And that'll fit on a six inch uh, build, build platform, six inch height build platform. You see the model's now 140 millimeters. The other thing I'm going to do is click the move button and move the parts to the origin. And then we can zoom in and it looks all good. So this is ready to be printed. I'm just going to export this part as a... Here, I'm going to just save this one on the desktop. Um, I actually have already cleaned up this. Um, so I'm saving this as an STL file. The last thing you should know is this save dialog is going to warn you if there are any potential problems for the STL. So we see that eight faces could be become degenerated, 76 edges could become non-manifold. I'll click the repair button here. It now shows this in green and we're ready to export. So that is my workflow for cleaning up uh, 3D scans that I've done with Reconstruct Me or for that matter with any other uh, 3D scan. I hope this helps. I'm going to post this to the projects page on Thingiverse and I also want to remind you that if you want to uh, build the build plat uh, the scanning rig that I've created there are plans for it on Thingiverse and we have a bill of materials on Instructables and I ask you please use the Instructables build of bill of materials to purchase it because I get a little uh, bit of money from the sale of that bill of materials. Alright, thanks everybody for watching and that is cleaning up 3D scan files from the Scanatron 3000 using NetFab Basic. Thank you. Have a great day.